Thanks for joining us for this live streaming tutorial series for Ricoh Theta. We're going to take you all the way from choosing the right camera for your live streaming project to turn it on to live streaming mode. That's what we're going to cover today. As well as hooking it up with the right driver if you're on Windows 10. Setting up with OBS, pushing out that video stream to YouTube. And in the future, we'll be covering a bunch of other great techniques to use plugins for wireless streaming to various devices in network streaming so you can just stream right in your home or office on site and have that super low latency stream right into a headset. But let's get started first with putting that camera, the Z1, into live streaming mode. If you're streaming from a Z1, strongly recommend you update the firmware of the camera to the newest firmware. As of today, it is 1.80.1. Go to, with the desktop application, go to the firmware update, press OK. At this time, the camera is already plugged in with a USB cable. As you can see, I've already updated it to firmware 1.80.1. Prior to firmware 1.60.1, which was the previous version to this, the camera would overheat if you streamed in 4K mode. Rico introduced firmware updates so the camera runs more efficiently for live streaming. The camera run cooler allowing you to get those great 4K streams from your camera for 24 hours. I personally have tested it for indefinite streaming at 4K. If you wish to stream for 24 hours, you need a USB port that can deliver more than 500 milliamps. So ideally, the thing is delivering about one amp of, of current while the data is going through it. For this, you need a battery charging 1.2 compliant USB port. Not all the computers can supply this level of current while it's, it's in stream. So if your laptop does not supply that much power during the stream, the battery will slowly go down and down and you'll get maybe about nine hours of stream because you know it's still charging, it's just not enough to compensate for the battery charge. However, if you get the battery charging 1.2 compliant USB port built into your laptop, like on my laptop, which is an Asus Predator, uh, I can stream this thing indefinitely. Uh, the heat is fine. The battery increases in charge. It's great. Some of my computers, in fact, most of them do not have this BC 1.2. It's actually a battery charging 1.2 CDP uh, spec, just to be clear. But I think if it's, you know, generally if it's, if it's going to say battery charging 1.2, it's probably going to be able to handle that 1.5 amp charge. So on some of my uh, computers, I, I have this anchor powered hub with battery charging 1.2 compliant port on it. There's only one of the ports on this powered hub that has this BC 1.2 compliant port on it. And that's the only one that can stream the camera indefinitely uh, at 4K. So, you know, if you're just streaming at 2K, uh, you don't have to get this special port in my tests. So just to be maybe more precise when you're when you're making the buy uh, I, I think it's only like 10 bucks or something for these powered powered hubs or maybe more a 20 uh, it's they're not that much right you shouldn't be spending that much money on the powered hub if you need it but you're going to need a battery charging 1.2 cdp compliant the port has to send 1.5 amps charge while the data is going through Okay, if you have a battery charging 1.2 DCP, that thing is only going to charge it and the data won't go through. You won't be able to stream. If it's an SDP, the standard downstream port, you're going to max out at 500 milliamp data plus charge. So your powered hub could be a battery charging 1.2 SDP 
in which case the battery on the Theta Z1 will go down. All right, let's get that camera into live streaming mode so you can uh, stream it out in 360. The Z1 is plugged into a computer with a USB cable. To put it into live streaming mode, you will need to press the side mode button here until there is a live sign on the camera. The live icon will only appear when the Z1 is plugged in with a USB cable that is plugged into a computer. Thanks for joining us on this great journey. I hope you're as pumped about 360 live streaming as I am. There's been a lot of improvements to the Z1. The, the firmware has been upgraded to reduce the heat. You know, we figured out how to stream this thing for 24 hours or more. The 4K resolution is just fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. It also can stream on Linux and Mac as well too. So subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be updating this thing more with information on plugins, on how to stream it direct from the camera and get more into that. Just a heads up that if you did wanna process the live stream on Linux, which is because it's most common, with things like OpenCV, AI deep learning networks. We have examples to use this thing with OpenCV and Python on devices like the Jetson Nano. We can stream it to VLC on Linux. You can stream it from a Jetson, uh, Xavier or Nano to another computer using RTSP. You can process the individual frames or, or save it to the, the, the local storage of the computer for a later processing. It's a lot of fun. We've got it working on Windows, on Mac, and of course, Linux. So please join us. Hope you're as pumped as I am. If you're using it for anything cool, the live streaming, drop us a comment. Thanks.